This is my take on the Olympus 45mm f1.8. It's what a lot of people call a portrait lens, but good as it is for portraits, the 45mm focal length is a great deal more versatile than that. This focal length, or its near equivalent, 85 or 90mm in full frame, is one that has always been in my camera bag, from Nikon F film cameras with their 85mm f1.8 Nikkors onwards. It works well for landscapes, especially hilly or mountainous places where scale is illustrated better by picking out an aspect in detail rather than trying to get everything in the frame. And this sort of two times standard focal length also gives a pleasing perspective, to my eyes the most natural looking. It's a nice lens for out and about shooting where you can let the lens's slightly limited angle of view guide what pictures you take. I have to say that even more than being a favourite focal length or angle of view for me, this little Olympus is one of my all-time favourite lenses in itself. It strikes a blend of performance, size and price that makes it both a star performer and a bargain, terms that are not often seen together. So let's take a look. First of all, I need to get something off my chest. I think this lens is quite ugly. I don't like the wide mount and the narrow body. It, it looks sort of wimpish. But beauty is in the eye of the beholder and you don't buy a lens for its looks anyway. Physically, this lens is small and light. It weighs 116 grams or 4 ounces and is barely over 2 inches 50 millimetres long. You wouldn't go out with just a 45 millimetre lens for your Micro Four Three camera. But the diminutive size of this one, there's no reason not to slip it into your bag or pocket no matter what other lenses you take out with you. It doesn't come with a lens hood, can you believe that? Or a pouch? Olympus charged £30 for a plastic hood, and in my view a hood is a must. So the true price of this lens is what it costs plus £30. You can buy cheaper hoods, but that doesn't make it less of a tacky ploy. Olympus marketeers must have been trained by bankers before the crash. After all, Panasonic lenses come with very smart and strong hoods, and a pouch is standard. There's an unusual method of fitting a hood. The lens is supplied with a matching ring which bayonets to the front of the lens. To fit a hood, you take that off and fit the hood in its place, leaving you to find somewhere to put the ring while the hood's on. Duh. Anyway, the hood fits nicely backwards over the lens for storage, so that makes up for it. The aperture at f1.8 is fast, and promises a fairly shallow depth of field at wide apertures. There is no built-in image stabilisation, so on Panasonic cameras you'll need to take care in low light. Olympus bodies have the stabilisation built into the camera body, of course. The lightness of the lens is unexpected when you pick it up, because it looks like metal but it is in fact plastic over a metal frame. That gives it an unexpectedly insubstantial feel. My own experience of these plastic bodied lenses and cameras is that in reality they survive drops better than metal would do. I'm not in a position to do scientific testing on this lens. All I can say is that it has plenty of contrast and is tack sharp even at wide apertures. I have no qualms at all about using the lens at f2, even for pictures I want to be razor sharp. At f2.8 down to 5.6 or 8, I haven't come across a much sharper lens. The 25mm 1.4 Panasonic might be better if measured, but not to the eye. Focusing is fast, and the focus motor is just about silent in action, which is good for video. Here it is going from a metre or so to 15 metres distance, and I do hope you appreciate the scientific nature of my testing. Here's an image blown up to 200%. The lens is wide open. This is exactly the circumstance that would give you purple fringing if there wasn't any, and effectively there isn't any here. The lens doesn't focus particularly closely. As you can see here, about 18 inches or half a metre. Here's a typical use of this lens. This picture was for a legal web page and is at f2.8. As you can see, the subject is cleanly differentially focused from the background, and there's still a stop in hand. In this, I wanted the background how it is, so it's nice to know that you had more background blatting if you wanted it. A lens like this goes some way to laying to rest the often voiced criticism that you can't get differential focus on M43. Remember too that wide depth of field is as often as not an advantage as a disadvantage. Here are some of the pictures I've taken with this lens. I always try to be objective about the equipment I buy. I'm a fanboy to nothing, but it's going to be hard to sound objective about this item. 
Nevertheless, I am being objective when I say, if you have a micro four thirds camera, you owe it to yourself to own a copy of this lens. It is sublime. I can't see any way to improve it. The most loved lenses of my life have been a Nikon 180mm 2.8 for Nikon film cameras and the Sonar 150mm for my Hasselblad. Both very expensive bits of glass and worth every penny. And now this little Olympus. Mind you, it's not worth every penny it costs, because it's worth two of them. Just keep it between ourselves in case Olympus find out. Thanks for watching.